The Delta variant emerged in India's ferocious second wave, leaving its mark on millions. It's since crossed the world, sending infection rates soaring, threatening a return to normal and playing havoc with children's lives too, from school closures to long COVID and even severe illnesses. More and more studies show from Great Britain, for example, that 1% of children are hospitalized. That's not trivial. Just how dangerous is Delta for children? We should make our own decisions based on the evidence that's available to us. Uh, and the overwhelming evidence is that this is a mild disease in children. And should we be stepping up the race to vaccinate them? Hello and welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones in Berlin, where kids are currently enjoying the summer holidays. Schools are closed, giving parents the chance to spend time with their youngsters and protect them from getting infected with COVID-19. But what happens when schools reopen? Many fear that kids could then be exposed to the highly contagious Delta variant. The news from the UK, where the variant is sending uh, even kids now to hospital, has intensified the debate about vaccines. At the same time, scientists are still trying to fully understand the impact SARS-CoV-2 is having on kids, while the virus always seems to be one step ahead. And for more, I'm joined by Jakob Amann. He's an attending physician at the University Children's Hospital in Dresden. Good to have you with us. Uh, first of all, how dangerous is the Delta variant for children? Hi, thanks for having me. So, um, currently, we actually, we don't have any data that the Delta variant is more dangerous for the individual child than the Alpha variant that um, was prominent before, or the wild type, um, for that matter. So, at this point, if you look at hospitalization rates, if you look at peep, um, kids admitted to the ICU, nothing changed with the emerge of the Delta variant. The Delta variant is more transmissible, so you will have more people overall, and for that matter, more children who do get infected. But the individual risk did not change with the emerge of the Delta variant. Right. So does this mean that uh, kids suffering from COVID-19 at your clinic right now, that the number of kids uh, that you're looking uh, after there hasn't changed? Or are there more kids uh, at your hospital right now because of the Delta variant? So actually, currently, we do not have a single kid with COVID-19 in the hospital. In oh, that's place. good to know. And um, obviously, the numbers are still quite low in Germany. Um, but there are kids um, infected with the Delta variant in Dresden and the surrounding areas. But none of them has been sick enough to um, get to the hospital. Um, and so, and also, if you look at data from the UK where the Delta variant emerged um, earlier than in Germany, you don't see more kids being admitted to the hospital um, due to COVID-19 now with Delta being more prevalent. But we heard that uh, certainly the symptoms uh, of, of, of adults uh, getting COVID-19 through the Delta variant vary to the original strain. Now, you're saying, just to clarify that, that there is no difference whatsoever with children. No difference that we could um, determine at this point. So we do have, for example, a national registry where all hospitalized children with COVID-19 are um, reported. And um, we don't find any difference in the last month compared to the months before. And this is the same is true if you, if you talk to pediatricians in the UK, for example. So they don't see a difference either. Now, children do have it, mild symptoms usually, but they don't get very sick with the Delta variant. Right. Uh, I mean, a lot uh, point to the fact that we simply don't have enough data perhaps because uh, many studies, including yours, of course, uh, that, that focus on children. Uh, but critics uh, keep saying that uh, there are way too few test subjects and you just uh, basically confirmed that. Uh, does this mean uh, that uh, the studies, if we can call them, are ultimately scientific guesswork and we don't really know? Well, I think... That's a bit of an overstatement. So, I mean, you're right. There are not as many um, sick children than adults, which is a good sign, but also that's a result, right? So if you don't have 
a lot of kids in the hospital with COVID-19, at least you know kids don't get really sick with COVID-19. Um, and if this doesn't change with the new variant, then there's no reason to fear that this new variant everything will change for the children in this uh, particular setting. Um, in terms of um, guesswork, I mean, every study you do, you can answer usually one specific question, and there are a lot of questions that remain unanswered in this study. And scientists are very clear about that. However, you do have a lot of different studies from different countries, and you can look at the combination of those studies and then make very, very... Um, um, good assumptions about this. So even if this one study doesn't have enough uh, power to detect this and this, if you combine 10, 15, 20 different studies, you usually get a nice result. And just for comparison, so for example, our school study, we have 1,500 students included in this study. Um, the study to, to approve the, the uh, Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine in adolescents a thousand um, adolescents got vaccinated with the vaccine and a thousand got the placebo. So it's not that there are not studies with similar sized studies in children and adolescents that we can base our um, results right. on. So just very briefly, uh, because most children aren't vaccinated yet, is that a problem? Is this going to be a problem for them? Um, I don't, so individually for them, it's not a big problem. As I said, the, the risk for the individual kid to become severely ill with COVID-19 is absolutely minimal, especially if you do not have any pre-existing conditions. If there are comorbidities, it's a bit different, but even then the risk compared to all the population is very, very low. Um, so uh, would it be beneficial to have kids vaccinated to a higher degree in terms of overall transmission rate in the society probably would help a little bit, yes. But for the individual children, it does not uh, make a huge difference. Um, and to me, the important part is if, if you in your country, if your vaccination program, if you have to choose between um, vaccinating adolescents or let's say a 35-year-old, I would always choose the 35-year-old because he has the much higher risk for any COVID-related um, uh, sequelae right. compared to the child or the adolescent. If you are in a place where you say, okay, we do have now enough vaccines for everybody and basically we don't know what to do with them, yes, that's then the place where you should start vaccinating your adolescents at this point. I mean, there's no approved vaccine under 12 years old. Right. But... Um, not if you have prioritized those. And the other point that's very important to me is I think there should not be a connection between school attendance and vaccination rate in adolescents. We do know that the, the negative effects of school closures and school restrictions are much higher than any risk from COVID for this age group. So um, I think kids going to school is much more important than having kids vaccinated. If you can do both, that's great. But if it's not possible, they still should go to school. Well, it certainly sounds like we do have a choice here, which is not a bad thing. Jakob Amann from the University Children's Hospital in Dresden. Thank you so much. Thank you. So is every new variant cause for concern? Time for your questions. Over to Derek. As the SARS-CoV-2 virus inevitably continues to mutate, could it also mutate to become less deadly? This is complicated, but here goes. Um, the short answer is yes, that could happen, and, and we hope it will, but there's no guarantee. Um, scientists used to believe that pathogens always evolved to grow less deadly because it was thought a deadly disease is an ineffective disease. Uh, the reasoning was that if a pathogen kills its host, especially if it kills that host quickly, then it lowers its own chances of being passed on. So less deadly, more transmissible variants should have an evolutionary advantage, right? Well, the problem with that logic is that virulence can also be viewed as an advantage because the sicker the host grows, the more likely they are to give their pathogen to someone else, since they're shedding more of it. So, um, so we actually think there's kind of a, an evolutionary trade-off between transmissibility 
and virulence. And, and there are certainly pathogens, for instance, the tuberculosis bacterium that have been infecting humans for thousands of years, yet still kill large numbers of people. To see what the future might hold for COVID-19, therefore, scientists have been looking at the other coronaviruses known to infect humans, in particular the four that we think have been doing it for quite a while. Um, they only cause mild cold-like symptoms. Interestingly, that might have less to do with them and more to do with us, especially with our children. Um, one theory is that repeated exposure to those other coronaviruses in early childhood uh, might be helping to prevent more severe cases of the sicknesses they could cause later in life. If SARS-CoV-2 does become an endemic background illness in our societies, then, then later generations of children will be exposed to it early, at an age when it rarely makes you seriously ill. And, and that, in turn, should make subsequent exposures much less dangerous, or at least that's the hope. Now, meanwhile, the Delta variant is uh, driving a fourth wave of the pandemic in France. It now accounts for up to 80% of new cases there. The government plans to expand its list of places that only vaccinated people can enter, like the Eiffel Tower, which just reopened last week. It's hoped the scheme will encourage more people to get vaccinated. More than three million have made an appointment to do so since it was outlined a week ago. And that's all for this edition of uh, your COVID-19 special. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.